Yo, what's good, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another Queen's Review. This is Season 1, Episode 6, entitled Behind the Throne. I know that I am late with this review, and I'm sorry. Okay, okay? Um, <laughs> if this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning family member, you know that it is always good to, you know what I'm saying, converse with y'all. You already know what it is and what it will always be. Um, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe if you choose to. So let's just go ahead and get into this thing. So the show opens up with Bree. Bree is listening to The Breakfast Club where Fabio, I said, wait that, wait a minute, Bree. Are you crushing? Are you crushing on Fabio? We don't do that to young men. They're only good for one thing and then you discard them. But we'll get to that. So she's listening to his interview and this little nigglet tells the whole world that he slept with P6. I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So let this be a warning to the cougars or the wannabe cougars. Get you a young man who can keep his mouth closed. Okay? Next time, Bree, just get him to sign the NDA and you'll be fine, sis. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to let him go all the way, but just protect yourself. It's a different world than from what you guys remember 20 years ago in the game. So, um, unfortunately, her oldest son, James heard the interview and he came as <laughs> he was like did you do stuff <laughs> I said that's right he he's so innocent did you do stuff not did you have sex not did you do stuff I said that was funny embarrassing you know what I'm saying but funny so then we get to Valeria now y'all know I do not rock with Valeria like that but I really feel bad for her because she genuinely wants to have a relationship with this so-called mom who I do not trust by a long shot. I don't trust at all. So Valeria gave her a necklace and basically the mom was like, she didn't want to accept it or, she, you know, just, she was playing the role. She was playing the role, but basically Valeria had to like force her to wear it. And I was like, sis, wait a minute. I'm gonna call a sis on today's episode on this episode. I was like, sis, um, first of all, that necklace, I know for me, it was a little too expensive. Number one, we don't know who this woman is. We don't even know if she's your real mom. You have no pictures. Y'all ain't take no DNA tests. We don't know anything about this woman other than the fact that she stalked you before she made her presence known as to who the hell she really is. Number two, it's too soon for that. It is too soon to, you know, to start off with something like that. Start off with some sterling silver. And then once you know this is your mother and she's on the up and up, then you drop bands. But you don't drop bands out the gate, V. <sighs> I, I, oh, Lord. My heart went out to her because I'm like, this is going to be so bad. I, before I even, before we got to like the, toward the end of the episode when the truth, you know, or whatever came out, I was just like, I just, you just knew something wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? You just knew. I will not even know her intent, anything. So we go to Jill's ass. Yes, that's how I will address her until she comes to her senses. So Darren finally signs the divorce papers and he apologizes for his behavior. And he tells her that she's a good person and not to change too much. I said, too late, Darren, baby, you are too late because the Jill that you knew is long gone. Jill worked the nerve on this episode. I'm not going to lie. You know, one thing I hate, I hate, I hate users. I hate people who manipulate others and people who control people. I despise people like that. And Jill was, you know, definitely giving those vibes in this episode. And I just really wanted to punch her in her throat. So, <laughs> seriously. So, the the girls, they recorded a new song and they were about to shoot a video and a behind-the-scenes documentary. They weren't 100% down for it, but they agreed to do it. And so Bree had her concerns, um, especially after telling the, the ladies about her son knowing of her and Fabio. And so they were, you know, waiting for Muffin to send in her verse because she was going to be featured on the song. And it was basically like, you know, honestly, you know, Muffin doing their song put them back on the map. It, it made a buzz for them again. And this was their way of pretty much, you know, giving her her props or a. Uh, a public thank you, you know, what bigger way than to put her on a Queen's hit song. So when her verse came back, I'm not going to lie. It was trash. <laughs> well, let me not say that. Maybe 
maybe not all the way trash, but it did not fit with the narrative of the song. It just didn't. So there's another artist by the name of Lady London, I believe. She's sending a verse, and that's what, you know, Jill, Eric, and Valeria wanted to go with. Brie and um, Naomi was not feeling that. They wanted to go with Muffin. They are loyal to her, and that's who they wanted, but they were voted, and they shit, they were outnumbered. So Lady London, you know what I'm saying, was going to be the one on the record. So they had to tell Muffin. She... <laughs> She called him a geriatric something. I felt so bad for, you know, and Naomi was like, you know, this wasn't my call. Like, I wouldn't have done this. And so, you know, she was she was upset, of course, and even more so with Jill because Jill voted against her. And I believe that because of her, you know, drug problem that she's striving to get over, that's something that her and Jill have in common, and they really connect. And I just believe that she was just hurt that Jill wasn't one of the women who voted for her. And I could definitely understand that. So, speaking of Muffin, I'm just going to finish her little part up. So, so sad. So sad. So, I, first of all, I want her to drop this little click she got. I can't stand none of them. We found out that she have known them since middle school. And all they do is mooch off of her. They don't do anything. I was like, what the hell do they do? What kind of, they don't do anything. They literally just, you know what I'm saying, ex- exalt themselves based on her success. I don't like them. I'm like, they don't have jobs. They don't even serve you. They don't do nothing. They just, they're leeches. They leech off of you. That's it. That's all they do. She need to get rid of them. And I'd be so glad when that happens. So she wanted to set up a meeting with the label because she wanted to do her last album as Lauren. You know, she talked about how Muffin was a character that she made up because she was getting bullied at school. And that was just a character. But she, you know. Muffin is no longer a identity that she wants to carry on. So she wants to record as Lauren. Now in this meeting, the executives that she met with, they were with it, but they were like, you know, we have to take it to the higher ups. And then that's where they got their final word. So Eric ended up calling her to let her know that not only were they not going to allow her to record as um, Lauren, but they dropped her from the late, they dropped her from the label. And I was like, well, what really? And so I I don't remember the number. I want to say she's like $275,000 in debt to the label. And she was like, oh, well, we could just sell my house. I know that's a couple million or something like that. And he was like, you don't own that house. And I said, see, that's why it's so important for artists to read their contracts. How do you not know that you don't own this house that you're living in? Which was crazy to me. I felt so bad for Lauren. Because she's really trying to turn a new leaf. You know what I'm saying? Trying to have a, a new lease on life and this is what happens. I really did feel bad for her. I really did. So we know that Eric took care of the debt. We don't know what the hell Eric did. But I was like, hmm, does this have anything to do with the shooting? Because if you looked at certain previews, we know that Eric going to get his ass beat. We don't see the fight, but we see the bruises and the black eye and all that stuff. But I'm just like, Eric, what did you do? And then, but at the end, I'm going to tell y'all who I really think the um the shooting culprit is. So, we get to the infamous uh, um, video shoot. <laughs> so, we get to the video shoot, and we are introduced to a new character by the name of Rodrigo. He's fine, okay? He, he is sexy. And it's like he's sexy, and he knows it, but he doesn't overdo it. I was like, ooh. Mm, okay so so Rodrigo is the director like I said it and he has a little thing well not no little thing he got a big thing for Naomi I mean sparks were flying all over that damn video set I was like oh I like this I like so um speaking of video set Bree's children were wrecking havoc all over this place so (laughs) They crash in carts into the um the trailers. They're stealing food from the um the craft services area. It was just a lot. I said the girls must have been, you know what I'm saying, in the trailer minding their business. Because it was all the boys who were causing, you know, issues. The twins stealing, driving the carts. And the older brother, James, he's just sitting there watching them and laughing. So, you know, of course, she's going to him like, what are you doing? You're supposed to be watching them. You're supposed to be looking after them. And you're sitting up here laughing like, what's going on? Baby, 
When that little boy told his mama to keep being a slut, I said, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait. (laughs) I wanted to go through that TV and slap the hell out of him myself. I said, these kids bold as hell these days. Let me tell you something. I'm a grown woman, and there are certain things I would not say to my mom because you know why? I have sense, and I want to keep all my teeth, and I want to keep my sanity. The boldness, the bold, if I ever thought anything incriminating or if I ever thought anything vile or if I ever wanted to call my mom a certain name, you best believe it never came out of my mouth, even when I was alone because I felt like that chick could hear me, okay? So I was just like, oh, Woo, okay. Mm. Baby. But anyway, so um it was like a director and she was telling Bree that like, hey, we need you on set. Like, like we need you on set now. And so oh man, that just wouldn't that would have been a slap for around the world because that was just like and it's the way he said it, like, okay, keep being a slut. I was like, he had some anger. <laughs> He had some anger attached to that. I was just like, mm, let me move on. So Jill's ass, um, you know, Jill made a statement. And basically she was saying that if she knew she would get this type of notoriety, you know, and acknowledgement, she would have came out a long time ago. And that upset the community. So as much as they were here for Jill one day, the next day they were, you know, against her. So basically, you know, she experienced a little bit of can- of cancel culture which is bull crap because, you know, she was back hot in a few moments. So Jill, Jill's ass, um, in the midst of all this heat with this statement, then old girl who Jill assaulted over 20 years ago was giving her story. And she was basically talking about how, you know, what Jill did to her, you know, Jill pushed her. I think Jill called her a freak and, you know, because Jill was dealing with her own sexuality, not making an excuse, but Jill was dealing with her own sexuality and not knowing how to live in it freely, which does not give her any right to put her hands on anybody. So the girl obviously was shaken up and she was like, you know, I know that it was unprofessional of me, but I thought she was flirting with me. And she was like, you know, the way she responded, it just, it did something to her. She quit the business. And, you know, I said, I would never not, acknowledge because everybody is affected in different ways differently but I'm just like that made you quit on your dreams because she pushed you and called you a freak I'm gonna tell you something entertainment industry business people who trying to get into that if you don't have a backbone and if you're not in a place where you can mentally deal with people bashing you people not liking you even doing reviews just some of the things that I, I mean I tend to laugh at it but I'm just like, you know, there have, <laughs> when I used to review the show Star, it was crazy, like, the things that people would send me. And it's just like, really? It's that deep for you? Like, wow. And I'm talking about mine was on a minimum, you know, a miniature, you know, level. But when you in the in, in, into the spotlight like that, you have to be ready and prepared because things are going to happen. It's just inevitable. So, Jill was trying to find a way to smooth out her, her character. And she basically called Tina and asked Tina basically, you know, of course, would she do this interview? And, you know, Tina agreed to it, obviously, because we see them doing this interview on the couch. And, you know, Tina was basically like a character witness. She was talking about Jill when the cameras are not on or when it's just her and Jill together. What is she like? And, you know, Tina said everything she was supposed to say to make Jill look great. And and so they get to the party and, Lord Jesus, they get to the party. And so, of course, Tina's like, you know, I could take time off to come to come to L.A. And Jill was basically like, for what? Why you want to do that? You know, so we could be together. And Jill was like, uh, you know, I just, you know. There's so much going on in my life. I don't even think I have the time to entertain like a relationship. And she was like, wait, did I misread something? And so basically Jill told her, ain't nobody tell you to come down here and do this interview. God gave us free will. You chose. Now, let me tell y'all something. Tina for me on this show has shown great restraint. She has shown 
great uh, maturity. She has shown truly how you should deal with things. But see, I'm very mature, but there are some things I haven't conquered yet, okay? I'm still in the process. All I know, okay, all I know, I would have busted Jill all in her shit. It would have been blood dripping in that club from her whole junk just being jacked up. Because I'm like, you use this woman. You use her for your benefit. You allowed her to think something that was not the truth. You manipulated her to come down to speak on your behalf because she was thinking that this is a way for us to rebuild our relationship. I can get over the cheating. You know what I'm saying? Jill, that, mm, I said, Lord, that put a bad taste in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? I was like, it's Jill, Naomi, Valeria, and Bree. It's only four of them. I already don't like Valeria. Jill, I do not want to not like you too. You know what I'm saying? That's going to leave me with Bree and Naomi, and I feel like I'm going to always like them because they, to me, they're the realest ones. I just, I'm like, Jill, like, oh God. I felt so bad for Tina. This lady done took a flight from wherever they live. Dang, where they live at? Montana? Yeah. She done took a trip from Montana, damn country ass Montana, down to L.A. or over to L.A. to be played like this. And she told Jill, you know, you disgust me. And I just I just felt so bad for her, you know what I'm saying, in that, in that moment. And so, you know, she walked away or whatnot. And so now Eric, I love the – if y'all hear a train, I'm sorry. Eric, on the other hand, every time Eric – Eric was catching the vibes that Rodrigo – was sending over to Naomi, okay? And so he happened to walk in while they were, like, on a break. And so Naomi was trying to teach Rodrigo how to play the guitar. And um, it was a cute, let me tell you, they have really great chemistry, um, Naomi and Rodrigo. Um, and I said, I'm, I hope he comes back because I want to see what happens with that. I want to see Naomi happy in the love department, you know what I'm saying? So Eric walks in and he catches them in this cute moment. He was like, what's up? up and so it was very uncomfortable Eric is you know coming off like he's jealous he's feeling very uncomfortable with seeing Naomi I guess spend some time with another man but I'm like you was sleeping with Valeria all in her face you done been married twice what is your problem get over it Naomi do you boo I hope he becomes a boo or a possible boo or just someone you can give it up to I didn't mean for that to rhyme but it did Get yours. Get yours. The last time we, you know, she did have sex with Eric, but that probably wasn't good. <laughs> you know how sometimes you just go back to what's familiar? That's all, that's all I think that was. You know what I'm saying? It had been 20 years. You know. You know. But I like that. I like Rodrigo and Naomi, and I, I like to see, I like seeing them together. So we get to the club, and the girls are all together. And so... Rodrigo appears and he was like, you know, since we're not working together now, you know, we can have a dance. And she was like, I just came to, you know, chill with my girls. I said, baby, why are you blocking your blessing? Naomi, don't block your blessing, sis. Let this Puerto Rican poppy wine and dine you. You know what I'm saying? Women, we do that. We block our own blessings sometimes. It'd be some good men coming into our lives and we're so uptight or whatever. You know what I'm saying? We kind of push good men away. We need to stop doing that. But, Valeria, oh Lord. Like I said, I just felt so bad for her this episode. I have a lot of respect for the producer because she was like, you know, if I was a better producer, because most producers would have put that in that darn documentary and she didn't do that. Let me tell you something. For a producer to not include a juicy um shot in their um documentary, let me tell you, that was that's a good person. You know what I'm saying? Because they'll do anything to make a documentary or a show pop to gain views, likes, and, you know, commotion. And she didn't do that. But what we saw was we saw Valeria's so-called mama, because like I said, the jury's still out on her, her so-called mom taking pictures of her um credit cards. And I was like, are you serious? Lady, come on. Really? And, you know, the girls were trying to warn Valeria, like, you know, and even Eric. He was like, you know, from what I've learned, when family comes out of the woodwork, you know, they're coming back for one thing, which is money. Now, mind you, 
Valeria is not in her 20s. She's not in her 30s. She's in her 40s. What made you come around now, sis? You didn't come around and try to seek, you know, try to seek her out when she got fired. It was public. It was all on Google. You knew the truth, but you waited until things were going well with the group to make your presence known. Mm -mm. I don't know how Valeria going to handle this. I'm so interested to see how she does. And it was just horrible. Like that really, I was like, damn it. I went through so many emotions um, during this episode. It was a really good episode. And even dealing with Brianna telling her son about, you know, being the man of the house. I'm not really a fan of that. Telling, you know, young boys that they are the man of the house because they get certain thought patterns um, that becomes embedded in their identity. You're not a man. You're a little boy. You know what I'm saying? Things may change within the household. The father may have left. The father may have passed. And, you know, in Brianna's case, but it's like you're not a man of the house. You're the big brother. And I need you to step up as a big brother and help me out with your siblings. But to call him call him the man of the house, I'm not a fan of that. So I just don't agree with that terminology. And I think even breaking it down to where the child can understand what you need from him and which she, which she did, you know, like to help me with the other ones to be strong for them. And, but I also would have enjoyed if in her speech, when she said, you know, I need you to be strong for them and I'll be strong for you, you know, but whenever you feel like you need to talk, you need to cry, we got to be each other's, you know, um, uh, I guess strength in that moment. You know what I'm saying? I cry to you, you cry to me. But I just don't like the man in the house. That's my only that's my only thing. Other than that, I thought it was a great episode. I really enjoy it. Queens is a really good show. It's really it has really exceeded my expectations. I really didn't know what to expect from the show, but I really enjoy it. I really do. And I love the fact how we can become invested in everyone's story where it's not like one person is consuming so much of the screen time. So good job, ABC. Good job, Tim Story. And everybody else who created this this amazing show. And so um so thank you guys for listening. Until next time, you be safe out there. One.